Morning, guys. Welcome to Coffee Chat. Mm. Well, guys, I sure hope you have had an absolutely fabulous weekend. I'll tell you what, we got a lot done around here. Not as much as I wanted to get done, but I did get a lot done. So that was a real big bonus. And I'll tell you what, the weekends, they always seem to go by bang just like that, don't they? And then here we are. It is Monday. I love Mondays, as you all know, because it's the beginning of a brand new week and everything is all coming out. And it's kind of like, you know, it's just like getting that fresh start. But anyway, guys, what's going on in this wide world is absolutely crazy. And the article that I was reading today, this one is one you want to pay attention to. I kid you not. I'm going to put the link in here so you can read it for yourself. But it's talking about the great high level possibility of capital controls coming in to the U.S. economy. Boy, oh boy. Now, the question is, hey, what are capital controls? Hmm. So what capital controls are, this is where your government can literally limit how the amount and how you spend your own money. I kid you not, they have done it before in this country. They, they can do it again for sure. Now, how that works is just how much you can take out of your account day by day, how much you can send out of the country day by day, and, in, and literally it can get to the point of what you can literally buy with your money. Think back in the 1930s when they put on some serious capital controls during that Great Depression area. One of them was you couldn't, as a U.S. citizen, own or buy gold bullion. It was illegal. And that literally carried on right into the 1970s. I kid you not. That is one of the biggest things a lot of people in this generation that is coming up don't really absolutely can even fathom there was a time when we could not spend our money on things that we wanted to spend it on in order to insulate our purchasing power or anything like that you had absolutely zero uh, choice or ability to do that now the fine get this back then if you got caught doing it and you were holding it somehow or hoarding it somehow the fine was ten thousand dollars which was an obscene amount of money at that time i mean literally you could buy houses for ten thousand dollars back then and on top of that, you could potentially face even some jail time. I kid you not, it was that strict. Well, guys, this article was talking about a lot of these capital controls potentially coming in because of the high, high level of inflation that we are about to see because of the total de-dollarization around the wide world. Now, come January 1 of 2024, we have a number of oil-producing states like Saudi Arabia, Iran, um, Argentina, different ones like that, that are going to become full-fledged members of BRICS, BRICS countries. Now, why is that so important? Well, most of us in the West, and especially here in the United States, owe our lifestyle and our purchasing power and on and on to the petrol dollar. You better believe it because way back there in the 70s, Richard Nixon, President of the United States, sent Henry Kissinger, the Secretary of State, out to Saudi Arabia, and they, they brokered a deal, a big time deal, that oil from these OPEC countries and all that would not be sold on the global market unless it was sold in US dollars. Well, what happened there? Well, guys, now all these nation states around the wide world, there was a huge demand for US dollars as because they needed it in order to supply, you know, meet their demand for, you know, their oil and all that consumption and things like that. Well, that gave the United States a big, big stick in the market, of course, with that world reserve currency status, that petrol dollar. Well, with this whole deal that's going down, we are watching the de-dollarization of that because, hey, that's off the table. Saudi Arabia flat out said, well, we're willing to sell our oil in all kinds of various currencies, including gold and other national currencies and things like that. Well, a lot of these nation states that have had the pressure put on them with sanctions and everything like that and have had to hold on to U.S. dollars, well, they are dumping them and they're dumping them like crazy. And what's that going to cause, guys? The inflationary result is going to be mind numbing. And this is where this individual is saying, listen, you watch that happen and you are going to see capital controls in ways that most people in this country have in, in recent memory can't even fathom. I mean, other places around the world, it certainly happened where they limited what you could take out of your bank account per day. Hey, the next big bailout is not a bailout. It's a bail in. 
and they will literally reduce depositors. Now, of course, you got this whole FDIC, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, and apparently, you know, they're, you know, supposed to be able to back all these accounts with 250000 or less, guys. With the amount on deposit, they don't even have 10% of the assets, you know, in order to, in order to literally cover all of the accounts they insured. It's a, it's really a dog and pony show. But the fact of the matter is, is that we see all these dollars coming back in and the inflation just going all up. And they put those capital controls on there. You could literally see a bank holiday where they literally limit the amount that you can take out of the bank, perhaps even, you know, like uh, reduce the amount you've got into the bank and stuff like that. But on top of that, you know, they can literally limit how you spend it and on what you spend it. They've done that before and they can do that again. Now, the thing is this, this guy was saying, hey, there's four different ways that you could potentially protect yourself or insulate yourself in a way from capital controls. Now, one of them, that he was talking about is, hey, open up a foreign bank account and stuff and put some dough in there. Now, remember, you have that federal requirement to file FBARs, federal bank reporting for, you know, accounts that are outside. But needless to say, you could park your money somewhere else. Another thing he says, look, oh, go out there and buy some foreign real estate. Now, I'll tell you what, that's what a lot of people from China have done in order to protect their, you know, in order to deal with the monetary controls of China that they have literally invested. And that's why you're seeing high, high prices, you know, on the West Coast and in Vancouver, Canada and on and on and on because it's foreign investment mostly. And they're driving the prices up because they're parking their money over there so that they can avoid the capital controls of their own nations. Now, one of the things that I thought was truly amazing, of course, is that the fourth one that he says is the kryptonite against this whole, you know, uh, capital control thing is to be invested in digital assets. Guys, they, the banks, the government, they cannot stand it. And why is that? Because self custody. Just think about this. Here we have our self custody. Now we have monetary instruments. XRP for sure is a monetary instrument. Why? Store of value, unit of account, million drops for XRP and medium of exchange, isn't it? And within three to five seconds, you could send money all over the world using the XRP ledger and your self custody wallet. Well, you can't do that with cash, can you? Because, of course, with monetary controls, you go into your bank and say you want to send, you know, a thousand. Well, you can't send a thousand dollars. You can't send ten thousand dollars. Why? Well, you're only limited at eight hundred dollars a day. And on top of that, there's only certain jurisdictions. And the government right now is not allowing us to send that capital outside the country. And on and on and on they can go. You can't put those restrictions on digital assets, especially in self custody. Now, that is one reason why I believe down the road when we get that regulatory clarity and institutional adoption, we will see institutional custody. And you can bet your last XRP, I think they're going to be gunning for self custody and they will require a lot of these self custody wallets to comply with various things out there in the marketplace. Now that's my personal belief, but I think eventually that is going to come because of course they want to be able to have the 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 regulatory and the and the legislative authority over every monetary instrument of course like they do over their own, you know, release fiat monetary instruments. That's what I think is going to come down the road, but until then guys, Hey, you want to insulate yourself from, you know, capital controls in an environment like this? Digital assets, boy, is a big, big way. Mm. And you got to think about that. Guys, it is not a negative thing to think ahead and literally see the environment for what it is and to prepare. Look, if we saw some big time rain clouds coming out here and the wind was really blowing. Now, Judy and I live in like tornado alley kind of deal. I'll tell you what, we'll be batting down the hatches and making sure that, hey, anything that could really cause a lot of damage is gonna be put away or tied down or what, what, right? You're gonna take preparations. Well, guys, see the storm, see what's coming. Go out there for yourself in heavy, heavy, Heavy inflation more than likely is on the way with the demand of U.S. dollars literally dropping off like crazy and coming back in. You're going to want to think about all those manufactured goods that are made outside the country. And hey, if the goods aren't made outside the country, what is? Usually the packaging's made outside the country. That's why I encourage people to go out there, stock up on the things that you would normally use. It's a form of savings. Cause let's say it's six or seven dollars now. Well, then it'll be 12, 14, 15 later on and stuff like that. You really, really need to think about it. And a big, big, big one 
has to be food. Think about it. You just want to have some food insurance. Now, guys, I know hey, a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, how much food can you, and on and on. The thing is this, we all have car insurance, don't we? Now, we pray that we never have to use our car insurance, but we all have it in case of that eventuality, don't we? And it's a legislative requirement. Well, I'll tell you what, having a little food insurance and things like that, a little extra supply insurance does not hurt to be sure. And then, you know, getting out there and looking at ways in which you can insulate yourself from the impacts of what's coming down the road. Just read the signs. That's what I would say. Hmm. And then you don't have to be living in anxiety, panic, fear, or anything like that. Why? Because you got your back covered. That's why. And you take that off the table. Judy and I, we've been doing that for years. We've been preppers and that kind of thing, investing into this digital asset space, that kind of thing. And for us, it's like, okay, we can see it coming. Yes, there's concern, broader concern, of course, for all the community and things like that. But for ourselves, we're not living in panic and fear, thinking, oh my goodness, we got to get this, you know, resolved and on and on and on, stuff like that. Take that anxiety off the table by giving yourself a little peace of mind, knowing, hey, I've got myself, it's covered over here, if things need be. Anyway, that's kind of what I think. Well, guys, I sure hope you're having an amazing start to your week and a fantastic Monday. And look, we have an amazing video planned for you later on today. And until then, guys, have a great one and take care.